It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein still has a job, at least for now. Reports Monday morning said Rosenstein had offered to resign and was on the way to the White House where he expected to be let go. But Rosenstein ended up attending a regular meeting and was not fired. The concern over Rosenstein's future comes days after a report in the New York Times that Rosenstein offered to wear a wire to record President Trump and even discuss removing him via the 25th Amendment. Rosenstein has pushed back on those claims. Multiple sources say that while he did mention wearing a wire to other officials, he was being sarcastic. The White House now says Rosenstein will meet with President Trump on Thursday, which means that while Rosenstein is in place for now, uncertainty over his future and the Mueller investigation he oversees very much remains. The Mueller probe has been very busy lately with the sentencing of Trump campaign aide George Papadopoulos, a conviction and subsequent plea agreement with campaign chair Paul Manafort, a reported interview with Trump fixer Michael Cohen, and the announcement of the pen and sentencing of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Well, joining me is Craig Unger. He is a veteran journalist, best-selling author, whose latest book is House of Trump, House of Putin, The Untold Story of Donald Trump and the Russian Mafia. Welcome, Craig. So a lot of anxiety this morning uh, for people concerned about the fate of the Mueller probe. Uh, it appears to have died down for now, but as I said, the White House uh, has announced that Rosenstein and Trump will meet on Thursday, so we'll see what happens then. I've heard some theories that it was the Trump team that deliberately planted the story about Rosenstein being in jeopardy today to distract from all the latest news uh, surrounding their Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. Um, your take on what's going on. Do you think that Rosenstein's job is safe? No, I don't think it's safe in the long run. Whether it, And it seems like Trump has been chipping away, chipping away at the prosecution uh, really ever since Mueller was first appointed. We've had him, he, he fired Sally Yates, he fired James Comey, and now there's uh, been this hubbub about... Uh, uh, about Rosenstein, we'll we'll have to wait till the meeting on Thursday. But one of the things that that disturbs me a little is that if uh, Rosenstein were, were fired right now, the current Solicitor General Noel Franz, Francisco would be the guy who would take over, and he himself is, is, may well have a lot of conflicts of interest. That is, he was part of the Jones Day, he was partner of the Jones Day law firm. And they have been, for all intents and purposes, Vladimir Putin's favorite law firm. Their clients include Oleg Zaripaska's Basic Elements, the Alpha Group, uh, the Alpha Bank, uh, Rosneft, uh, Bayrock, which was was uh, partnered with Donald Trump. So, so there are a lot of potential conflicts there as well if Fran Noel Francisco takes over. As we await to see what happens on Thursday, uh, let's talk about some of the developments that have been happening in the Mueller probe. Uh, most recently, we had former campaign chair Paul Manafort. Uh, he was convicted in his first trial on charges of uh, tax violations and bank fraud uh, pertaining to his lobbying work in Ukraine before he joined the Trump campaign. Uh, after that first trial, he reached a plea agreement uh, uh, with, with the Mueller team, including a cooperation deal. There's been widespread speculation about what Manafort will be offering Personally, I'm, I'm skeptical that he'll give anything that will be of interest to a collusion uh, case, but I'm, I'm curious for, for your take. Yes, my take is very, very different. Um, uh, one thing Paul Manafort knows is he knows how the Kremlin works, and he knows that because that's precisely who he's been working for, Vladimir Putin. And if you look at what he's done in Ukraine, it's always reported that he's working for Ukraine. Well, he, he was going to Ukraine. He made 138 trips uh, to Ukraine, but he was really working for Vladimir Putin to install a, a Putin protege, a puppet really, uh, Viktor uh, Yanukovych as president of Ukraine. Uh, that's what he was trying to do in Ukraine. And of course, it it, uh, it went on over a 10-year period. There were uh, where there was the Orange Revolution, followed by the m events of Maidan Square, I, I think it was in 2014. And now it appears that uh, in many ways, I, I think what he was doing in Ukraine for, for Putin was almost a dry run for what he did in 2016 in the United States Again, uh, helping install uh, uh, someone who is very cozy with Vladimir Putin as president, this time as president of the United States. 
Okay, Craig. So I could not disagree with your take more. Uh, and I think this is important because I think the, 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 uh, the perspective, the, the narrative you're presenting there is very widespread, but I'm surprised to see it because even in the Mueller uh, indictment, the, the new superseding indictment of Manafort, I think there's ample evidence to show that Manafort was anything but pursuing a Kremlin agenda inside Ukraine. Uh, it, it details the work that he did uh, with Viktor Yanukovych, and it shows repeatedly that Manafort was trying to push Yanukovych towards a pro-EU, a pro-Western agenda. Um, let me read for you well, some that, of that, the... Let me read for you, Craig. That, some of that, the, I mean, it's ludicrous on the face of it if you followed the events of Maidan Square, because Yanukovych ran on a platform of getting closer with the EU, and of course he did precisely the opposite once he took office, and that's what triggered the events of Maidan Square. Okay, so listen, we can get into a long debate about what happened in Ukraine. Let me just say quickly that the the history it, that I It's I've not had, really necessary. Look well, where well, the well, money right. comes from. The money well, comes from from Putin's oligarchs. It's as simple as that. Follow okay. the money. Okay, so uh, you're talking about Oleg Deripaska, uh, probably most prominently. But before we get to that, let, like, let me just say, so Yanukovych, according to how I understand things, he actually tried to play both sides. He was very corrupt. Uh, he wanted, uh, he seemed to uh, 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 entertain this notion of an offer with the EU. It was actually very close to signing an agreement. But then- Excuse me, I, I, I gotta tell you, you you're, he, that, that's what he did during the campaign. And as soon as he was elected, he, he did a 180. I'm saying that there were uh, years of negotiations uh, with the EU, between the EU and Yanukovych, leading up to the period of his ouster in 2014. And, and look, just to show you what Manafort was doing. Uh, so if you look at the superseding indictment from Mueller, this is right there in the indictment. Mueller has a lot of documents from Manafort's company uh, that was working for Yanukovych. So for example, Mueller reports that a member of Manafort's group met with President Obama and Vice President Biden in May 2013. This is as all this was going on, and Manafort was crafting Yanukovych's strategy. And this uh, member of Manafort's group, quote, delivered the message of not letting the Russians steal Ukraine from the West, unquote. So that was the line that Manafort was pushing to the White House at the time. Okay. And, and it shows, and I, in the, hold on a second, Craig, and it shows that yeah, even in the- but it's not the line they delivered. They, they switched the other way once he got elected, and they were taking all their money from Putin. You're, you keep forgetting yeah, that. When we already, talk about this, oligarchs, when okay, we talk right. about oligarchs, whether it's in the Ukraine or uh, Russia, they serve at the pleasure of Vladimir Putin. So when Manafort is being paid by oligarchs, he's effectively- doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin. That is elemental. Yanukovych was elected, but in the period, I'm talking about 2013 here, when he's already in power, and he's supposedly, according to your account, uh, representing Kremlin interests, I'm saying that Manafort is pushing him towards an EU agenda, as Mueller details in his superseding indictment. Oh, that, that, that's so, all I can say is, I, if you let me answer it, all I can say is that's, that's just spectacularly naive. Look at Manafort over the last 38 years. He's been uh, representing one dictator after another, one tyrant after another, true, taking their true. money, and he finally and he finally moves on to, to Vladimir Putin as his backer. Yeah. And he is doing Putin's bidding. And what this is about, in large measure, if you look at the energy trade and all the natural resources, Putin uh, puts them in the hands of his favorite oligarchs. And in this case, it's people like Dmitry Firtash uh, and Darip Oleg Deripaska and several others. So okay, the money, those, let, let me finish. And sure. if you want to hear me, if, otherwise you shouldn't bother to interview me. Okay, that money is then skimmed by people, and I have court records from the, including Semyon Mogilevich, a very, very powerful Russian mobster, and much of that money is then siphoned off uh, to pay uh, Manafort. But that's where it's coming from. It's not coming from pro-European, pro-Western, pro-U.S. interests. It's exactly the opposite. And if you I believe what his minions were saying to Obama, I think you're being very naive. Uh, I believe Manafort's own internal records that he was not pushing 
a pro Kremlin agenda. Okay, so here he is uh, writing to colleagues uh, about a, a trip report. And he uh, talks about sharing the uh, goals. The, he, he's, he's talking about a trip from a colleague to Washington. And Manafort is talking about the goals that this colleague shared on this trip. And they were to support the position of EU enlargement, thereby encouraging EU integration with Ukraine. To help decision makers in the U.S. government understand that Ukraine is of strategic importance to the U.S. and the EU, and that if Ukraine is not guided towards EU integration, then it will fall to Russia. So that was at no, least, it, you know, know what, Craig, it, hold on a second, it, Craig, hold on a second, hold on a second, hold on a second. <laughs> that at least is what Manafort was telling his colleagues, including Viktor Yanukovych, the president, in internal email. Well, he, he was telling his colleagues all sorts of BS, and he started a, a, a phony think tank to create phony policies. And this is all in those documents if you read them. Uh, his own, Manafort's own deputy, Rick Gates, says, Manafort had a, had a completely um, a very sophisticated shadow government, and he was really running things under Yanukovych. Those are Rick Gates' words, okay? No, I'll tell, you, I'll, tell you um, what, I'll tell you what Rick Gates says. Rick Gates, in the first Manafort trial, testified that it was Manafort who crafted the strategy called Engage Ukraine. And, Man and Rick Gates testified this quote. He said, Engage Ukraine became right, the strategy. Right, it's a phony strategy second. to woo. Engage Ukraine a became the strategy. Strat oh, this is silly. Okay, correct. This is really silly. I, uh, I mean, so if you look Gates at the policy, look Gates at what testified. they did. Okay. They fostered Craig. Russian troops coming into Ukraine. Craig, did, they did slaughtered Gates, people did Gates in Maidan Square. Did they Gates took testify? money from Putin. Okay. Did, no, they didn't and, take money from Putin. And you're taking did, some did phony Gates documents. testify? Hold on a second. Did Gates testify that this strategy engage Ukraine was phony? It was a fraud. It was public relations. No, he said this was their actual I don't strategy. Know all of it. He didn't. No, of course I, you don't know because he didn't. Engage Ukraine, the, but in what way? Engage Ukraine for who? For I will tell you, for who? I'll read it for you. I'll, I'll read it for you. West, this is, this is Rick Gates. EU. No, I'll read you they what Rick did Gates that said. They did that as a strategy to win the election, and then they did a 180. That's exactly no, okay. what happened. We're okay, Yanukovych took power in 2010. We're talking about the period after that, when he's still in power. He's negotiating with both sides, Ukraine and Russia. Okay, And this is what Rick, Rick Gates testified. He said, Eng engage Ukraine became the strategy for helping Ukraine enter into the EU. And as a result, a public affairs report was put together in the EU and the US for that work. Okay. He's, right, what, and they did a 180. They did exactly the opposite of that and then slaughtered the protesters. No, How and, can and they, you so, ignore that? That's exactly uh, what they did. Killed dozens of people. What were happened protesting was... protesting the 180. You, you're, happened, you're, omitting, okay. you're no, no, no. buying a, only policy no, and you're no, no. omitting that he got tens of millions of dollars from Putin, that he then executed, put Putin's the, puppet in, he ran a phony campaign to get him in, and then they did the 180. What I'm saying is this, and I think it's obvious from the documents I've just been reading, which is that Manafort's internal strategy was to push Yanukovych towards the EU, away from Russia. That's the that message he delivered to Congress. Shall, that's the message he delivered to President Obama. That's, the, that's the message he yes. delivered to Yanukovych, his own client. Yes, and then but it's, it's not and what then, he acted on. And then, he acted yes. the other way. Okay, correct. This, and then is, it, this is being silly. No. You're finding, uh, you're, free, you're dismissing his actions and you're dismissing no. the money. You're as dismissing as, the people who were killed. You're no, dismissing no, that he's got millions of I'm certainly not. I'm certainly not. As late as... No, as, as then, late then, as then explain as this late? to me. Then, explain, then okay. Aaron, explain this to me. He takes tens of millions of dollars from the Russian mafia yeah. who kill people. Putin kills people who disobey their policies. Look at Berezovsky. Look at Litvinenko, okay? People are murdered, okay? Uh, Paul Klemnikov, they're murdered for going against Putin's policies. So Manafort takes over $60 million. Then he he betrays Putin. That's what you're saying. And he gets away scot-free. I don't think He's so. Not taking it. What, really taking happened, it from Putin. It, what really <laughs> happens is they reverse the policy and they mow down everyone who objected. That's what actually happens is what, happened. what actually happens that. is what actually happens is the EU offers a, a deal but wants harsh austerity, including a cut to fuel subsidies. Yanukovych panics because he realizes that it's that's going to yeah, no, cost, him, talk, cost him ooh, votes. Ooh, wait, Aaron, Aaron, please. The fuel subsidies are, are uh, you have artificially low prices of, of the of Russian and Turkmenistan 
fuel uh, so that the Russian mafia and Putin can profit more. That's it. You, 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 you okay. bet that yeah. the. I, I don't dispute that maybe like that's what was going on with the fuel, fuel subsidy. I mean, I don't know the that internal. That is what was going but on. If what, you don't dispute it, then what is your okay, argument? No, no, hold on a second. I'm saying that Yanukovych. Yeah, then, not, hold on a second. Okay, Craig. It's not as if Yanukovych all of a sudden, uh, uh, you know, swindled the EU and, and actually went with Russia, who he planned to go with all along. What happened is, EU you wanted to, to hold a second, if I can finish, if I can finish. Okay, they Craig, certainly Craig, if, felt, Craig, the Ukrainian Craig, if I, certainly felt, so. I, I'm sure there are people, yes, who did not, who, who, who share a different view. I'm, I'm trying to explain to you how I understand what happened. The EU, uh, as late as the, I believe it was the fall of 2013, uh, wanted to impose Yanukovych some harsh austerity that he calculated politically he could not take. Russia came along with a better deal. Yanukovych took it, and that set off the protest. That's what, that, that was 2013. And also, and, and meanwhile, and, and, understand Russia as a mafia state. That's what's missing here, Aaron. I, you don't I, understand that it's a mafia state, and that Yanukovych is part of that. And Paul Manafort was fighting to make sure that that mafia state triumphs. That's precisely what's going on. That's what went on in Ukraine, and Manafort did exactly that. Uh, in 2016, when he wasn't even being paid by Trump, he was being paid by Putin and Russia. You know, I'm not the only one to say this. I want to quote for you, actually, Graham Stack. Okay, he worked for Fusion GPS, which is this firm that is behind the steel dossier. And Graham Stack actually says that it was his firm that is most responsible for this narrative in the public that Manafort was serving Kremlin interests. I want to read to you what he says. He wrote this after Manafort's uh, cooperation he, agreement. He, he writes, there have been scores of media articles about Manafort. 90% regurgitate the simplistic narrative of Manafort as a Kremlin Trojan horse. This narrative was developed by Washington commercial intelligence firm Fusion GPS as part of their now famous dossier on Trump, distributed widely among major media outlets. As a contributor to Fusion GPS, it, it, research it, it, on Manafort, <laughs> I share the blame because we got Manafort almost completely wrong. What we got wrong about Manafort, I, I, and what Mueller has got partly right in his indictment, is that Manafort was nothing like a pro-Kremlin influence on the former Ukrainian president, Viktor Yanukovych, as the dossier alleged. Instead, uh, Manafort was one of the driving forces pushing Yanukovych towards signing the agreement with the EU. The Kremlin is every reason. That's exactly Manafort's line. And you know what? Manafort, that was Manafort's line when he was pleading innocent, not guilty. He switched his plea. He's guilty. He's guilty, okay? He is, he is, so he is guilty that, of these You're lobbying. repeating his line from when he was, uh, before he was uh, convicted. Now he's been convicted and we know. And look at who he was working with. Konstantin Kalimnik, who was tied to Russian intelligence. Uh, who, we, we have, if you also be, look at the Mueller indictment. Who may be tied to Russian intelligence. Can you Russia, let me okay. finish? Sorry, Can you Craig, please right. let I'm me sorry. get a word in? I mean, he, he, he's not even mentioned by name in the, in the Mueller indictment, but he is by his position. They say that Manafort was talking regularly to to the uh, chief of staff of the president, and they don't give you his name. Well, his real name is Sergei Levanchik, I'm sorry. Uh, and who is he? Well, he happens to be involved uh, with Semyon Mogilevich in, the, in, in these deals I'm talking about that give uh, liquid natural gas so cheaply to, to Ukraine at artificially low prices, and that is precisely what's being skimmed. Uh, you see it again that Manafort is using, this is in Mueller's indictment, He's uh, he launders his money through a company called Lucical LLC. Well, what is Lucical LLC? It's a company that is also owned by Mogilevich, the, the big crime master. And to, to portray uh, Manafort as this poor little innocent victim is kind of pathetic at this stage when he's already no, pled guilty. No one is calling him a poor little innocent victim. No one's calling him a poor innocent he victim. Laund no one's he, he is obviously... Money, he's laundering money through the Russian mafia, okay? And he's been talking regularly on an almost daily ba uh, baby basis with a, a, a with someone who's closely affiliated with Mogilevich. Nobody, I mean, I, I, it's nobody is accusing. No, nobody is saying that Manafort is a, a innocent victim. Obviously, he is a. a but a, suddenly, a, you've turned around his policies on a uh, done a one eighty on them. There's simply I, not I'm the going, case. I'm going. I'm going by what I mean, I'm going by what Mueller specified. 
I'm going by what Mueller specifies with detailed documents from no, Manafort's you're company. Inside his quotes from Mueller's thing that have no real meaning okay. in terms I, of policy. That, the, that, that's the, not these are what extensive happened. emails from Manafort to his colleagues in the Yanukovych during his during his work, his critical work in Ukraine for which he was convicted. And and my point there is not that he's innocent, that he doesn't work for shady people, that he isn't corrupt, that he didn't cheat the U.S. I mean, it's very obvious from his trial. My point is he was not doing the Kremlin's bidding. And the reason it's important is because Manafort- Wait, Then whose bidding do you think he was doing? He was working for himself. Because Yanukovych certainly turned against- Yanukovych certainly turned against uh, uh, Europe, and uh, and Manafort was there day after day after day. Craig Unger, uh, this was a lively discussion, and I look forward to more with you, and thank you for your time. Craig Unger, veteran journalist, best-selling author, latest book is House of Trump, House of Putin, The Untold Story of Donald Trump and the Russian Mafia. Craig, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News. 